All right, all right, all right. Welcome to URA's Pew Talk. I am your host, Rooney. And, uh, well, uh, this podcast is something new for us. You know, we, we, we've gotten a lot of feedback. A lot of people have asked us questions. Are you going to be doing any podcasts? Oh, I love your videos, but I like to listen in the car is what a few people have <laughs> told us. And uh, we always get routine questions. And we say, why don't we, uh, we try something different to help you guys out? So in our first episode, uh, while we're running our tests and getting all our systems up to date, um, I thought, how fun would it be to talk to you guys about the history of URA, how we started and what got us to where we are now? Because um, we actually started, uh, we, we officially say we started in 2005. So you guys put that together almost 20 years ago. So um, sit back, relax, and uh, this is the history of URA. So, um, you know, we actually started um, about spring, I want to say spring 2004, maybe fall 2003. Uh, myself and some of our legacy guys, um, we're actually in Boy Scouts together, believe it or not. Um, troop 888. And, and actually, I just found out that troop is still in existence. It's pretty cool. One of the other airsoft dads, his him was part of that troop now. I, I was I was laughing on the inside. I was like, wow, they still exist. But anyway, um, so we started out in the scouts at a uh, we were volunteering for a gun expo out at the speedway, and uh, I was in charge of doing the twenty twos for the kids, and uh, I also got to do the shotguns as well. And let me tell you guys, if anyone at a gun show ever asks for volunteers, you say yes. Okay, Hunger Games style, because they were like, well, we've got an overabundance of shotgun ammunition. Please use as much as you want. So I was shooting shotguns all day long. I had to switch arms because I just I couldn't take it anymore. I shot every shotgun known to man. They had like 50 of them I could play with. It was amazing. Did some competition shooting with uh, with one of their all stars there. It was really fun. Um, I could I could talk for hours about that one. That was intense. Uh, but anyway, anyway. Um, so. At the at the at that expo, we they obviously had a lot of stuff for, for sale, just like any any Comic Con would. And um, I found my first twenty dollar spring action pistol. And let me tell you guys, that was the worst pistol ever. But it was my gun, my first gun. I'm sure most of you, some of you guys, have probably bought something like that. Little spring action, seven rounds in the mag, POS. That's what that is. Um, and uh, well, I took it home. And what's the first thing y'all think I started doing? With it? Yeah, exactly. I started shooting my friends with it because you always do that when you have a, a, a fun firearm. You know, I don't care what you got. You got, you got to show your front buddies. And that's what I did. I showed uh, showed our man Boudreaux and Kenny, and I immediately began to shoot them with it. We would take turns shooting each other with it. It was pretty fun. And then the escalation began, the es- escalation. Then they go out to Walmart, and they buy some clear, y'all probably remember these, the clear $20 Uzis with the gravity-fed mags that look on the top. They kind of look like New Day gel blasters. But they were really just airsoft Uzis, and they were junk. You know, present-day gel blasters have more hop and more distance than these guns used to have, right? So I had my little pistol. We got some little POS uh, Uzis. We got some little Springer shotguns. You know, you shoot them too fast, you're going to break the, uh, the pump and go buy another $20 one, $10 one, whatever it was. And um, that's what it is, right? So we got these little guns. And just like any good escalation, the escalation of where we could play began to get more restrictive. It was, you can't play in the house anymore. And then it was, you can't play in the yard anymore. You can't play in the neighborhood anymore. So where the heck are we going to play? So we actually, um, we actually had a friend who had 20 acres of land, which we dubbed Underwoods. And uh, we began to build a small kind of, maybe we were young, you know, high school. We were building like clubhouses and stuff out there. We were turning it into a little field and um, had a lot of fun out there. And it wasn't too long until, of course, we wanted more players. So we started recruiting from school, recruiting Anywhere we could, and uh, lo and behold, one of the one of our groups, one of our friend groups, Troop Eight Eighty, all they are already in airsoft. They, they also needed a place to play, so hooked up with that troop, and we did an official, an official rivalry match one night. Eight Eighty versus Eight Eight Eight, and who do you guys think won? I'm a, I'm gonna guarantee you it wasn't us. We had Walmart crap. That's what we had. <laughs> so they came out there with full metal AEGs. Uh, we'd never seen an LMG before, grenade launchers, and they just mopped the floor with us. Oh, it was it was sad. It was sad. Okay, it was it was just the worst. <laughs> it was bad. So after that fun fun uh, friendship started, we all started splitting up, and we all started playing games almost every weekend. Um, 
it was it was funny. It was like Boy Scout camp out, and then all the other weekends were airsoft. It was it was pretty fun. Um, so it wasn't long till we all you know we're getting real friendly. We're like, let's make this an official thing. And then some point in 2005, we said, okay, we settled. I'm gonna say settled. There was a lot of arguments involved, uh, but we settled on URA, right? On URA for our uh, for our uh, our name. And and I gotta tell you. you, you you ever look at our pages or anything, you find the old logos, oh, they're horrible. We had too many people copy the Punisher, all right? And we were one of them. <laughs> um, but um, and we settled on URA, so we say we officially started together in 2005, uh, which is our 20th anniversary is coming up soon. But most of us have been playing a little longer, about 20 years you know, um, since that since that uh, that gun expo. Well, from there, guys, it, it got kind of fun. We had We were routinely having about... 30 players a weekend on this private field that we had all invite only all from our Facebook group. And if I'm not mistaken, our Facebook group is one of the oldest airsoft club paid, you know, groups out there. It's pretty crazy. Um, and anyway, we started using that and, and, uh, and, you know, private invite only and all that stuff. It was a good time. And then somebody said, Hey, let's see if there's any other place that we can play. I heard about this farm. And, um, you gotta remember now back then, Back then, Jesus, now I'm the old guy. Um, back then, there really wasn't anything else. I mean, Balak wasn't there yet. Roanoke wasn't there yet. Most of the fields y'all know today were not there. It was literally everybody's backyard, right? Blackstone Airsoft opens up. We were there. Lance and Chuck Doran, awesome family. Um, they opened up Blackstone Airsoft. It was a 40-acre farm. Um, it was really cool. We could play in all the farm equipment and, and open fields and houses they had out there. Um, and we were there once a month because that's – all the games they had once a month. And it would average about 100 players a freaking game. It was fantastic. We have some old videos in our old school YouTube channel if you ever want to check it out. It was it was nuts. For all you guys that remember that field, if you were trapped in that barn, it was the craziest time of your life because you, you, you couldn't get out of it once the enemy got close. You just couldn't get out. It was the craziest Alamo that we could do. But anyway, we so what, it didn't take us long to really get chummy with the owners. And uh, we actually started, we were showing them our field, showing them our our scenarios and stuff. They started liking it. And we actually started helping them not only run day games there, we started actually running little ops there. We ran a couple ops. Uh, my favorite one was when we did a hundred player code breaker. It's still one of my favorite game types today. Um, and after four hours, nobody claimed victory. After a lunch break, I was told to cheese it for two other teams because they couldn't get the third number or whatever. Um, Got to love that mode. We'll, we'll still walk you through that one day. Um, we might even do that at Roanoke this weekend. That'd be kind of fun. But hey, um, so we did a couple of events, and uh, we were with them for for a good time. So, so our, our, our almost until high, you know, college, you know, two thousand nine ish. It was it was the glory days, man. It was we'd have an event or two of three events at our home field. We would do one event at Blackstone. Um, we started hearing of a large field out on the East Coast. You probably know that one called Ballahack, but we never visited it yet. Um, but we were just in it for the ride, man. We had plenty of stuff local and in Farmville to check out. And then the Dark Ages began. And I call it the Dark Ages because that's what it freaking was, okay? In the same year, not only did Blackstone Airsoft close its doors, um, but we lost our 20 acres of land. It got sold to a developer. And we were out. So we were like, oh, my God, where are we going to go now? Well, at the same time, that's about the same year or so that Airsoft GI moved to town. Um, it's the same year that I believe New Kent Paintball Games opened up. If y'all remember, I was that idiot that wore a, a big bright orange shirt when they played just because it was nuts. It was like 100 plus people at New Kent. It was such an amazing day. Um, New Kent was there. Exxon started doing games. Obviously, we've been going to, we, were, we were started hitting up Ballahack once a month. All these new fields are popping up. A lot of them are still in existence today, right? Um, so we would do, you know, a game at New Kent. We would do a game at Balahack. Those are our two top fields we would hit almost every month. I still have a, a record of every event we played during that time period. Um, it's nuts. I mean, I think co- uh, collectively uh, a couple of us have been to over 200-plus events. We would keep records of that stuff for some reason. <laughs> but um, so, you know, but as we, when we lost our field, I call it the dark ages because that's when everybody was really in college and the lives and the wives started taking over. You know, I'm in college, I'm starting a career, 
starting a family, whatever. So our our team at one point had 30-some people officially on the team. Got doing them down to about 10, 8, 6, 4. Uh, for a couple, almost a year, it was just like three of us, four of us. Uh, we were going to New Kent and Balahag all the time, and then it was just me, little lonely me. And I was still doing two a, two a game, both locations, just having the time of my life, you know. Um, actually got my first S&P engine when they first came out for Wolverine Airsoft. Um, but then new hobbies took over. I kind of missed having a big crew, and uh, we kind of took a hiatus. Uh, URA did for about a year, maybe two. Uh, we were all, we were out of the scene for a little while, um, but about two years later, um, after I gave up, uh, I call up. Uh, Joe called me. Dirty Joe called me up. He said, "Hey man, what you doing today?" And ironically, he didn't know this, but I had actually bought a new VSR ten and P ninety. Is that what really wanted to get back in the game? I was gearing up to go over to X Zone and see what was new with Airsoft because I missed it. I missed the pew, baby. I missed the pew, and. Um, so he said, what you doing? And I told him what I was doing. I'm getting guns. And he laughed. And he's like, dude, I'm looking at my cart right now. I'm, I'm buying new stuff too. And I said, are we really going to do this? Get the band back together? He said, oh, hell yeah. So, <laughs> so there we go. 2019. Thanks, guys. So uh, 2019, we got, we got a lot of the old crew back. Uh, Dave, me, Joe, Mike. I think there was, who else did we got? Jason was our first time. Right? A couple of the first times. About eight of us. So we're. Where the hell do we play? You know, we we gone to X Zone, checked it out once or twice. We wanted to try another field. We wanted to find a new Blackstone. We really did. Um, we didn't know where to go. So we uh, and and that 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 idea, of where the hell do we play? Because you guys know how Facebook and how Google works, right? It's hard to find a field and know exactly what the expectation is. So we said, okay, well let's let's go to every field we've heard of and all these player suggestions from other fields, and we'll play them once, see what it's like, and try to share the word. And that is the principal idea between our field review videos that we've done that seem to, to help a lot of folks out there. You know, if you've never been to CZ, watch the video and give you expectations, which ironically I'm going to have to redo because they just moved. Um, you know, and that was the, the idea behind it because we were looking for our new niche. We were looking for our new favorite field. Um, so pretty much all of 2020, that's what we did. We would go to two or three uh, venues every month, check them out. Meet the owners, meet the players, and um, God, it was a it was a, a, a fun time, man. It was a super fun time. Uh, played at, at some fields that we absolutely loved, some that we regretted the drive, some of them where we were like, "Oh, we'll be back," you know what I mean? There was there was a little mix of everything because in my my opinion's always you gotta try everything once, right? So um, anyway, we found a lot of friends. We 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 figured out a lot of new favorite fields, and. Um, and after we kind of met the owners that year, um, they thought we were the, the ones that you know liked us. They were like, oh, we like what you're doing. And we created that conflict series, Red, Red Dawn. You know, remember that in 2021. The idea was to get players to, to kind of do like what we do. You know, we don't mind an hour drive, two-hour drive. If it means it's going to be a great event, a great day. And uh, we were trying to get players to do the same. Like, there's other fields out there, guys. Check them out, play them out. That's what we did, and I gotta tell you that that first event series, Red Dawn, it was the El Nino of events, the unicorn, if you will. Because let's face it, dude, COVID worked in our favor. Nobody was doing special events that year. Almost everyone had over a hundred players. Our, our our max was one hundred and sixty players. Holy crap! We set some records, right? And after that, we said, okay, this is kind of fun. We got we got fields that owners that like us. We got. We got players that, that think the way we do. Let's keep these weird special events. It doesn't have to be 100% milsim or 100% you know, just weird. It could be in the middle, that little niche. And so that kind of started the next kind of avenue of URA was, was, was putting on special events across Virginia, the fields that, that would have us, that would, that would want to try something different. And that, that's been fun. You know, we got our conflict series, our division, and a bunch of other ones that we do. Um, all in that same vein of just doing something different. Um, and and then as that grew, we began to grow the business side of URA uh, with our with all of our contacts. You know, we're, we're dealers for, you know, a dozen or so different airsoft brands and, and partners with several fields and national groups. And 
it, it's all in an effort to just promote the sport. It's pretty fun. So that kind of brings us to now, you know, of what we do. Do we're the mobile shop, we're the event coordinator, and of course we're just uh, an airsoft club, or or as a lot of the team members like to say, a dad support group. <laughs> because that's what a lot of us are. So um, there's your, there's your short history of URA. If you guys remember any of that, uh, let us know in the comments. Let us know if you if you remember any of pieces of that story. If you were part of any pieces of that story, you know, say hey, my guys. And uh, we post in our second episode soon, where I'm going to introduce you guys to your other host, Finry Jeffy, and we're going to be rotating. Um, special guest every every other time from owners to players and uh, talking more about the pew so uh, thanks guys and we'll catch you later